Well, good morning, London Network Church. Today, I just want to tell you the small story of Bob, part two. Last week, we had part one, and that was the adventure of how Bob gave up a lot for the kingdom of God, but it was so, so worth it. So, the question last week was, who is Bob? And after some thought, we decided Bob is your uncle. Yes, that's right. Bob's your uncle. Get it? (laughs) So, let's begin the story. So, the story and adventures of Bob continues. One day, Bob and his friends were together. They were having a great time, but Bob felt God encourage him to go and pray. So, instead of praying out loud to everyone, he journeyed into his own room. He shut the door and he said a few simple prayers. He didn't pray on and on with long words as if to impress God. But God was impressed with his heart to pray. The attention was away from Bob and was towards God and his prayers was towards the world. He used his ten fingers to pray for different things. His first finger was to pray for his mum. There you go, the first finger. He was praying for his mum. The second finger, he was praying for his dad. The third finger, he was praying for his sister. The fourth finger, he was praying for his brother. The fifth finger, he was praying for his nan, a.k.a. his grandma. And then his sixth finger was praying for his granddad. And then the seventh finger, he was praying for his other family members. The eighth finger, he was praying for his friends. The ninth finger... He was praying for his teachers. Gotta love the teachers, eh? They do a lot. Welcome back, teachers, into school and to the children, too. Hope it's going well so far. And then the tenth finger, he was praying for the world. So, what happened next? Bob had a great time with God, and God had a great time with Bob. Good job, Bob. So this story is based off of Matthew 6, verse 5 to 8. It says in the Passion Translation that whenever you pray, be real and not pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others in meetings and street corners. Believe me, they've already received their reward in full. But whenever you pray, go into your room and be alone with Father God, praying to him in secret. And your father who sees all you do will reward you. No need to pray with empty words and phrases, praying like those who don't know God, for they expect God to hear them because of their many words. There is no need to imitate them, since your father already knows what you need before you even ask him. And in the end of LT, Matthew 6, verse 9 to 14, it says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. So the moral of this story, good old Bob, we love Bob, uh, is that we don't need long words to pray. We could just come to God as our friend. We could come to Jesus as our king. And through Jesus, we could ask and receive. He already knows what we need, but he likes us to ask like a good father does. Um, So I just want to pray. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, that we can approach your throne. Thank you uh, that we can know you, Father, that we can pray and ask in your name. Thank you that you love us. And yeah, we just ask you to come and fill our lives today. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name. And a quick activity is to make your own hands. So maybe get your parents to draw around your hand and then number them one to ten. And then write what you want to pray for. So whether that's for your friends, whether that's for your family, whether that's for a situation going on in the world today. And yeah, take a picture of that, share it with us, and maybe pray each day using your hands. That would be a great thing to do. God bless you. Have a good day and pass on over to Christian for worship.